Good evening. It's my turn to welcome you to the 23rd Greek Economic Summit of the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce for a most interesting subject, the rebirth of the Hellenic defense industry. I have the great uh, joy to have to converse with the Minister of National Defense, Mr. Nikolos Panagatopoulos, and Mr. Dennis uh, Nicolas Papatsas, who is senior partner of EFA Group. Of course, the conjuncture of uh, this discussion is most interesting. We have a war in the broad uh, uh, neighborhood that uh, creates needs for armament, not only in Europe, but the whole of the world. And in our close neighborhood, we have a, con- a constant and continuous threat that makes us to continuously purchase state-of-the-art and costly armaments. So this is the best moment to discuss the contribution, the participation of the Hellenic defense industry and the need for its rebirth. So with this introduction, I would like to give you the floor, listen to your presentation, and then have a Q&A session. Right, yes, Mr. Dionidis, it's quite that. There are two fundamental reasons for which we must intensify our efforts, because there are efforts being made, but it is my belief that that we need to intensify them to um, um, uh, recreate, as it were, the national defense industry. I wouldn't go for the term rebirth, because a rebirth um, um, requires a death to have pre-existed. pre-existed. Now, it may have uh, worked uh, in a subpar way or worked with deficit problems, but not for an absence, lack of uh, operation. I would like to um, use a different term. Uh, we have the capabilities, we have the possibilities. I would go for a restoration, as it were, or reinstatement or rehabilitation. So I would say that there are two key reasons why this is the best time and it's um, um, an opportunity of historical magnitude to make this. First of all, it's the national reason. That quite simply has to do with the fact that um, a country that de facto has developed these armed forces with this degree of readiness, of um, battle capability, Um, existence even of of these defense systems, either the state of the art, the ones that we are currently acquiring, or the already existing ones that do have tremendous needs of support and why not upgrade as well. So uh, Greece of today, with the challenges it has to face, must base itself for the support of these uh, systems on an active, extrovert defense uh, industry. And this is the first part. The second thing is that there is a unique, I would say, opportunity due to the conjuncture. The war in, the U- in, in Ukraine has changed everything. Europe has decided um, in an aligned way to invest huge amounts of money in defense, which means, of course, the participation of the defense industries of each member state, but also a larger need for coordination of defense industries the Europe over. There are the needs. The countries contribute in defense material and equipment to the Ukraine, so we have the need for the replacement of the armed forces of these countries of the equipment that they have already contributed. And it's not uh, nothing. It's nothing to sneeze at. There's, there are tremendous quantities of arms availed to, at um, Ukraine to deal with the Russian invasion. I would say that um, there is a new need to disentangle from systems of Soviet or older um, 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 technology. So this is a new dimension that entails the participation of the defense industry in supporting the systems that will come. And as I said before, there is the general uh, framework of a Europe that comes to invest a whole lot in defense. This means opportunities for each member state and for the defense uh, industry in general. It requires central um, um, organization. um, And I had the opportunity to speak with um, people in 
EU dealing in defense and there are key people, the EDF, the European Defense Fund, the officials of the EDF, EDA, the European Defense Agency, you know, CAR, the um, procurement um, agency of the EU to exchange views with them and very um, soon I will have the opportunity to participate in a day conference held in Brussels, unfortunately not live due to um, prior engagements, uh, but virtually, but this is a heated debate. I believe that this is the time for Europe to better coordinate the ensemble of the European defence industry. <clears throat> and this, is, this means nothing more than the better coordination of the defence uh, industries of each and every member state. To put it mildly, I have put forward and first some priorities in each main um, arms system to have um, teams of uh, EU countries, some being leaders and some following, but um, participating nonetheless. Provided that there is a rational and proper distribution of each project. Therein lie the difficulties, and these are the difficulties I have been dealing uh, with on behalf of the European Union, because all countries are being pressured by the local and domestic defence industries who want to defend their own uh, vested interests. And it's very difficult to have such a coordination. If not now, then when? This is the key question that we need to answer. Now, in Greece, I believe that efforts have in fact been made. These efforts have yielded results. I believe that they have not yielded all the anticipated results or the best results possible, but things are moving in the right direction. But there are still issues. I would like to single out the part of the Hellenic defense industry that is state controlled and distinguish it from the private defense industry, which disentangled from the need for it to exist and be sustained by the state, which is the need of the armed forces, has developed the necessary extrovertness and the one that we wanted for the state-controlled defense industry to have developed. And it has not succeeded in doing that to the extent we want. Be that as it may, we still try. We're still trying to create the necessary conditions. There are companies with the private Hellenic defense industry, little gems, I would call them, that have developed a very rich extrovert activity in the worldwide market, and it's a cutthroat competition. It always has been and always will be. But I believe that this is offering a framework of bigger opportunities and chances. I believe that this historical conjuncture we're living through makes it imperative that we intensify our efforts to help the local defense industries, both the private ones and the state-controlled ones, so as to allow them to seize this historical opportunity. And of course, we shouldn't forget the other thing, which is probably um, the more important thing when seen under a national perspective, to support, to the extent that they need to support, these armed forces with these preparedness, with this um, 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 capacity, and with these systems that, as of late, with the activity we have in the armed systems, are increasing by the day. And they must receive and um, have this support. And therein, the participation of the local Hellenic defense industry is a big bet. There are efforts being made. I can see in front of me the general director of the GDAE, Mr. Alexopoulos. I can see the uh, Mr. Kyriakidis, who has been uh, the leader of the People who have worked on these issues and keep on working on these issues. But I believe that now is the chance and the opportunity <coughs> for us to intensify our efforts. We must not less let this opportunity um, um, be lost, both um, locally and internationally. Well, you agree with the term uh, uh, rehabilitation instead of rebirth, Mr. Papatsas, and do you consider with that with all these armament programs that are in the pipeline now, that the Greek uh, companies in, um, active in the branch of uh, defense have the desired degree of participation. Well, I'll agree, first of all, with the minister that a lot of things have changed in our country, especially after the MOUs. 
the fiscal austerity period. And due to the geopolitical crisis, we now find ourselves in completely disparate conditions. Perhaps our country was the first to deal with this geopolitical aspect uh, with uh, asymmetric threats from the neighboring countries. And this, of course, has brought about great alert, alertness in many aspects. But before Uh, dealing with that, let me say a couple of things regarding the Hellenic defense industry. We can obviously not speak of the future of the the without taking the lessons from the past, what operated in the past and what did not. And of course, I refer to the institution of industrial, industrial partnerships or offsets. Perhaps now, uh, supply security programs, current ones. We must be one of the very few countries of the EU that will have no specific policy to institutionally support AIV. In the European Union, most uh, uh, small countries such as Denmark, uh, Finland, Czech, demand for such industrial partnerships. And the bigger ones that do not have such partnerships, it's very rare to sell a system unless they also participate in selling that system. That is, they become co-partners with the seller in order to secure uh, industrial offsets. There are also other examples, such as Poland, for instance, where the state assigns either state or private companies to have the provision of a defense system, and therefore this company takes the obligation to bring in uh, the constructor and thus they secure a large part of its participation. That is, all countries, in other way, they find a way to be better integrated, both in the European guideline vis-a-vis the pursuit of uh, offsets and all have uh, uh, substitute them with programs of uh, procurement uh, security. But let us see some examples of the past vis-a-vis our country in order to see which foreign companies succeeded and which did not do much, I will give you two respective examples. A a NATO ally, not an EU country, has taken more than 4.5 billion euros through contracts and within 15, 10 years managed the following. It refunded to Greece 1.2 billion euros in infrastructure work. This is all measured. Uh, contributed in coverage the needs of uh, the uh, uh, of the army and has high construction ability. Their constructors continue to be exclusive or have exclusivity in some production lines uh, for those plants. For Uh, as subcontractors. They created also other programs, thus making export champions whose exports over the last 12 years have risen to 800 million euros, and they expected that these exports will be even bigger. So what are we claiming here? We say that the Ministry of, uh, of Defense has spent 4.2 billion euros for armaments, and was refunded immediately 1.2 billion, and out of the investment will refund an additional 1 billion. If you see this paradigm, it's almost 55% offset in the industry and Greek economy. So indirectly, directly or indirectly. Now we have got another example from the same country again. We have a main constructor, the well-known Intracom company participating in Patriot Construction, which today is one of the main suppliers of this company, and obviously is obviously a part of its turnover in a high state-of-the-art technology systems. On the contrary, if we seek some examples from European companies, which are easier to do away from obligations of industrial partnership, we can only see some uh, fragmented construction projects that were assigned, which were very temporary. No export uh, champion, no long-term participation of the supply chain of the supplier for intensity supply projects. So the conclusion is when there is a clear but flexible plan for industrial partnership obligation, opportunities are created. But what do we do and what are the current projects in the pipeline? As the minister has said, there are many 
projects uh, in the pipeline. We've got F-35 with the USA, the big contracts uh, with France, such as for the Rafale and the SDI. Excellent choices by the government for the boosting of the defense uh, uh, mechanism of the country. The government did excellent choices. And others come along, corvettes, missile systems, uh, military vehicles, and so forth. Let me say a couple of things about S-35. It's not merely a fifth-generation aircraft, but has been designed so as to be a platform of industrial participation with a huge supply chain that exceeds and connects 15 countries. All the participating countries, and I stress the word participate, have extended industrial work. Something else that we should not forget is beyond the industrial work and the supply chain, the specific aircraft introduces and disseminates technologies of the future, such as cybersecurity, uh, human-centered uh, operations, and so forth. Now, with regard to the French programs, we aspire as ARV, but unfortunately have not seen as yet a remarkable industrial agreement, and definitely it's not compatible with the size of those contracts, except in some uh, good examples, such as Thales Hellas, only promises are given and innumerable MOUs. For the time being, therefore, we haven't seen something tangible. So we hope that this will change immediately and not have mere lip service or having someone come to the minister saying that in the framework of this meeting, of this agreement, I will do something more. And let me stress something so as to be just vis-a-vis -vis foreign companies and actually French ones. The overall demand for 30% Greek participation and all the more so if there's no obligation for sick security supply, uh, supply chain security in such platforms that they are very urgent for our country's defense is this is our first quest and this is what uh, the minister should be involved with is uh, impossible and loses scope. This is a kind of firework, I would say, so as to play music in one's ears if we see in action that this is not feasible. So as head of the association with the 44 member companies, which are all active and uh, involved in the sector of defense and security, and which are 94% of ARV, we will not offer this justification to anyone that is speak of this 30%. We aim at uniting forces and we are quite close to agreeing with uh, the Association of Greek Industries, of uh, space industry, so as to offer a broad uh, spectrum of uh, commodities, products and services to ancillary activities to the defense sector, such as defense and airspace. Now, President Macron is probably the most, uh, the greatest visionary in Greece by pressing for such um, uh, procurements, and we, as a part of this uh, national defence industry, support as Greece and as Europeans, as the LEA, because uh, we have a need for such initiatives. But the French market is still unapproachable for various countries possibly with the exception of Germany and Belgium. What is for certain is that it is not approachable by the Greek Hellenic defense industry. This can and must change. French companies may have the 30% refund, and I'm talking about refund, rather than um, co-production, learning from other good examples in Greece that I mentioned in the beginning. Assistance in um, um, various Greek companies, not necessarily and compulsorily those who will do direct subcontracting work. And of course, I can bring some examples, like, for instance, imports in the French market and other sectors. I mean. I mean, a Greek company could offer their products in the Greek market easily, in the French market. It's not something I couldn't understand. Introduction in, the inter, in their international support chain, even easier, maybe assistance in specific markets. We know that the French have great access 
to French-speaking countries' markets. So they could help, they could use and, and help Greek companies become subcontractors of systems or subsystems in those markets. So the selection of SMEs are, um, are the, with the exception of um, um, the two big companies, is ranked in the small and medium-sized enterprises in terms of European defense industries. So by devoting resources and time, these companies will be able to be first and become champions. And there is something else I would like to say. The robust and long-lasting Greco-French collaboration has a glorious future. We can see corvettes, we can even see satellites. These are things we have expressed. We've told the French, we've told the Italians, and Italians uh, would like to have a corvette program assigned to them. And we haven't seen any mobility for them to come and discuss seriously with the Hellenic defense industry as to how this project will come about and we wait from them a proper reaction. Just one last example. Well, I would like to give some time uh, to the minister, Mr. Papadzas, because you've raised a whole host of issues. Let me give you another example. We're in space with Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, the narrative has changed ardently, and we have new space right now. So small and medium-sized companies undertook to create new equipment that is used in space for communications and everything else. Some of these examples we saw in the recent geopolitical crisis. So with this new space, Greece does have companies that can participate. The European Union is running um, at a very fast pace and we could follow. And in conclusion, I should like to say that the government must support this approach with institutional procedures and processes like our direct participation to the developments, everything for the common European uh, defence approach. Uh, the minister said about uh, joint uh, procurements. This is very important for our um, country to participate in the OCAR. And this is exactly what was described by Mr. Scholz, the German Chancellor, in Parliament. Europe needs this partnership and Greece can be there. Minister, <laughs> the programme of the enhancing uh, the Hellenic Navy that has uh, that is in the spotlight with the corvettes, uh, with the upgrade in the modern, the midlife um, uh, modernization of the Miko frigates. Will this give this additional share to the Greek companies that belong in the Hellenic defense industry? What is the plan? What is the vision? We know that there is a discussion with both candidates, um, <coughs> contractors to build ships in the Hellenic shipyards. But is there a plan, is there a design for the involvement of more Greek companies? Well, to link it to what Mr. Papadza said, it's very important, my intention is not to respond or to retort, okay? We're not in litigation. We, we listen to their views and to the rational positions of the Hellenic defense industry as a whole. Of course, the position that more needs to be done for a more well-organized, uh, possibly institutionally organized participation of the domestic um, defense industry in the arms programs that are under development in the country uh, at the moment is in its basis a correct one. What we want to do is to do it properly in an organized manner in an orderly manner in the benefit of the Hellenic defense industry. Of course, there is rekindled interest because many such um, arms um, um, programs are running now than in the past. But it is a chance. It's an opportunity. Let's make the best of it. As regards the Hellenic Navy programs that are impending, because we already have in progress the shipbuilding of the first Greek FDI frigate in the, of course, um, um, French um, group shipyards. But there we have some participation of the domestic uh, Hellenic defense industry. Twelve contracts have been signed between green companies and the main procurer, the main uh, supplier. I don't know the exact amount. And of course, it is not something that is, how shall I put it? It's not an excellent result. We could have signed more, but the framework agreements on which these arms deals are based on, at least theoretically, have provisions for defense collaboration and partnership at the level of defense industry. A similar deal is sought to be struck with the Italians. They're one of the main candidate countries for the Corvettes program. 
Similarly, the French, who have set the 30% goal. Of course, it's a very attractive thing when they say 30% of domestic participation in the shipbuilding program of the Corvettes. Now, to what extent it is feasible, realistic, or is misleading still remains to be proven, but it exists in the very foundation. Uh, there will, uh, in the text of the um, 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 bilateral agreement for collaboration in this part. Similarly, with the Germans, if other programs run as well that are on the table and are being examined by the general staffs, because we follow and we listen to the remarks and proposals and suggestions of the general staffs regarding what we should do in terms of upgrading the systems or addition of new systems used by the Hellenic Armed Forces. It is our intent and our intention as the Ministry of Defence and as the Greek government for all these initiatives to be based on a text of bilateral collaboration that will include the defense industry. The Hellenic Navy programs, well, the fact alone, and I think it's, it's a given, the fact alone that some corvettes for the Hellenic Navy will be built in a Hellenic Greek shipyard is in fact a part of the proposals of uh, both finalists of uh, the contractors to, well, take the, the job, to put it bluntly. These corvettes, not the first ship, because the first ship will be built in, in France, uh, and will be built in the shipyards of the company that will take the, um, the, the, the job. The second, the third and the fourth, if we exercise our option, will be built in Greek shipyards. Now, both companies have reached an advanced level of understanding with the Skaramangas shipyards and the Elefsis shipyards on the other hand, so it's a given fact that there will be shipbuilding in a Greek shipyard. Now, this is not the Alpha and the Omega for a, a battleship. You know better that the systems that um, are installed on it, the weapon systems, the anti-submarine one, electronic warfare, and everything show, uh, adds rather, the biggest part of welfare and added value and participation. The shipbuilding is for the hull, for the ship. It's important, but it's not the key. So there an effort will be undoubtedly made for to uh, secure the participation of the domestic defense industry companies that can undertake part of this uh, job uh, through its general director and the team that will carry on the negotiations once we make the final decision. And this is, the time is very nigh because the final proposals and suggestions are already in the hands of the general, of the staff of the um, uh, Hellenic Navy for final evaluation. The negotiations that will start and the deliberations will be quite interesting. They will not be easy. You know, no negotiation is easy. It's complex. Whenever we are contractualizing such um, issues, and we haven't done many in the past few years, negotiations uh, used to include the part of local participation, always. So I take it for granted that not only as regards the shipbuilding, but also as regards the participation in the creation of the equipment and the other the systems, we will have such a participation, which is um, what is sought after. There are other projects running as well. In any case, the fact that Hellenic shipyards will be ready, well, not immediately, we need to invest um, uh, funds there as well, but they will be ready and some time needs to be spent for them to become fully operational or at least ready to undertake an ambitious plan of building a Corvette-level ship or to undertake the project of modernizing the uh, midlife um, um, uh, modernization, if we're talking about 30, 40 years of the frigates, of the Miko class frigates. This is another project that uh, starts uh, moving forward and reaching its final stage in the period to come. Those of you who are into these issues, you know that the well technical dialogue with the company will take at least a year. A year, and this is the optimistic scenario, of course, in order to uh, determine and to um, define exactly what the width and the breadth of this upgrade uh, will be feasible. There are doubts even as to the amount 
of, um, of the budget we have calculated. 500 plus million will be enough for the full midlife modernization of those ships. Uh, we also have uh, the limitations from our budgets, uh, from our fiscal space, and this is where we must move. It will be a rather extensive modernization without any doubt. So which systems and who will undertake the upgrade of those systems will start immediately, in the very immediately forthcoming period. And it will be quite some time until we actually reach an agreement and the beginning of implementation of this project. So, in the immediately forthcoming future, there is a lot of work to be done. Um, and I take for granted the participation of the Hellenic shipbuilding and defense industry. And of course, there are other programs as well. I will say this because it's something that's worth uh, retaining. In the framework of the EDF, the European Defence Fund, whereas in 2019 we had five programmes for R&D, if I'm not mistaken, with the participation of Greek companies, in 2022 we have 44 such projects of research and development with Greek participation and uh, funded in the vast majority from EDF, European Union uh, funds. Companies, academic institutions, research institutions from Greece participate in what is currently done in the EDF. Projects and programs that will determine and define the future of defense. That is the orientation of R&D or um, joint um, programs like the European Corvette with the participation of a number of countries, traditional um, 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 powers in the shipbuilding uh, game with the Greece, which means that something is being done in the right direction. Greek companies are alive and they're participating. And they're not always traditional defense industry companies that produce X, Y, or Z defense material. It's IT and software companies that participate in such research and development um, projects. But network centricity and the development of new software that is adapted to the operational needs of each branch of uh, the armed forces, that is land, air and the sea, also involve such companies with their contribution in the design and the implementation of such systems. So not only is there a pulse, there is an increasing participation and therefore optimism. Which is why Greece is highly appreci appreciated in the EDA, <clears throat> the European Defence Agency. And the participation uh, of Greece is sought after and many Greek companies will participate. And it makes me glad that the Greek Defence Minister and the Thai, as the supervising agency, contributes in showcasing the capabilities of Greek companies. However, always, and I always insist whenever I'm on public discourse, we must be permeated by the sense of lack of satisfaction. We shouldn't be satisfied and say that uh, <clears throat> we have reached somewhere and we're looking at the future optimistically. We must work, work, work to make it happen. <clears throat> In the projects we have implemented so far, the big ones at least, from a priority to develop them as soon as possible. And I'd like to remind you that we had uh, the Rafale that uh, were already delivered and uh, the um, Air Force Base of Tanagra within one year after the contracts were signed. I don't know what you say. This must be some sort of uh, speed record, maybe um, a, a Greek or even international, or at least it means that this is what my uh, opposite numbers in, in Europe say. In, in Europe and those I discussed with. And this, of course, is due to the special conditions of this procurement. With the participation of the Greek and the French side, a um, triage was made of used Rafales in, in, in good condition from the French um, um, Air Force. These, of course, did not allow much um, intervention on behalf of Greek companies that very, very fast were selected handpicked, the personnel was 
train, because this is also an important part, and they were delivered for use with the Hellenic Air Force. Right now, we have delivery of the second half dozen. We have received two, another two will be arriving in the next days, and the second half dozen will be delivered early next year. And then we have the third and six, and the third and fourth half dozen. In the pertinent um, contract, there is a provision, uh, albeit a vague one, as a general wishful thinking or um, declaration of intent or participation to this project, but we'll see. The intention is there. The pressure will be exerted on the French. And you know better than I do that the um, um, manufacturing companies must develop a will to collaborate with uh, ARV. And since we are preferred customers, I would like to note that's after our Hellenic Air Force that was uh, the first one outside the French Air Force to acquire Rafales within the EU. Other countries followed, Croatia and possibly other European countries may follow because other countries outside of Europe had already made their orders and had already acquired uh, Rafales. I can um, remember Qatar and the Czech Republic that I saw that the purchase of the Rafale was used as a leverage uh, to the French side to vote for the organization of Qatar, uh, for, for um, um, Qatar organizing the Mondial, the World Cup. Now, um, today, Saudi Arabia mentioned that they will buy 200 Rafales. What better chance to set um, the um, excuses of the 12 used and 12 new ones, and given that we have very good, very good relations with Saudi Arabia as a country, to participate in this construction and to get this consideration or the part that corresponds to the Hellenic um, uh, defense uh, industry. Now, I would like to be the Saudi Arabian defense uh, minister for 24 hours with their budget, and I'm sure that the prime minister would also like to be in their shoes with all these funding capabilities they had. But I believe that with the decisions we made, the funding decisions we made, I already believe that we ushered in a new era for Hellenic national defense industry and the Hellenic national defense um, um, and arms, armed forces. But I must link it with the present. Armed forces with these systems and this readiness, this preparedness, this very well prepared personnel with a sense of duty, the professional approach, deserve and merit being supported by a competitive and competent to support defense industry. And here we have the responsibility to create these conditions. We have definitely exceeded the time allocated. We must unfortunately close this session. But I cannot uh, resist the temptation to ask you about EAV, the Hellenic defense industry, and whether we know when we will have the first call of interest for the future of, uh, of EDF. And I'll please ask you for a very brief reply. Well, the Hellenic defense industry is a valuable and necessary element of the domestic defense industry. It has proven that it can respond uh, to programs affected either for the account of the Hellenic uh, Air Force, because you know that uh, it is in charge of the maintenance of the fleet uh, of the military air force, but also in programs of cooperation, construction of spare parts of aircraft uh, on account uh, of uh, other foreign companies, such as the giant Lockheed, Mar Lockheed Martin. Of course, it's of its strategic importance and priority of the government and any government that like to see, to say, and the ministry, to have an operational and productive uh, EAV and effective and extrovert, of course. And therefore, <coughs> we focus our efforts that I always say in the parliament and elsewhere that the Ministry of uh, National Defense <coughs> is interested as a client for the result of the works of ELF. It's not under our remit. It's an other ministry who is in charge. But there is a plan of strategic cooperation with a specific company, the Hellenic 
defense industry called EAV, it's an acronym, Greek acronym. The last years, many efforts were made for convergence. There are issues, that's true, but there has been an improvement registered vis-a-vis -vis the recruitment of new personnel. The point is for the new workforce and personnel, since they are young and currently being trained, to take important posts in the supply chain to realize that there is a career path. There are perspectives. This has to do with the remuneration system, but also their productivity. I would like in an ideal uh, universe to have productivity, performance uh, interrelated with remuneration. That means that we must overcome some of the rigidities of the public administration and public budget. Proposals have been made on the subject. Suffices to underscore that the program of upgrading 83 F-16 aircrafts of the Air Force will be uh, given in the new version, Viber, the most uh, state-of-the-art version, and it is evolving in a very satisfactory way. The first uh, <laughs> aircraft, two aircrafts have been de delivered. Soon, by the end of the year, we'll also have the third one, and then one to two will be delivered each month, and the program moves smoothly. Other programs are faced with, uh, are hindered. But anyway, this Viber program is uh, the iconic one, and we must view them all. And at the center of the solution of all those problems lies the rational breakdown and distribution of the workforce, so for each uh, employee to be specialized in one's program and to be to operate there so as to perform as it should be done in a well, smoothly performing industry. EAV has great potential. Is the development of an unmanned uh, uh, aircraft, a drone. We have the appropriate unit, which as far as plans are concerned, is already involved in this project. As you realize, this is a program. It is an effort, along with all the others, which the Greek defense industry definitely needs. Therefore, steps are made towards the right direction. I consider that things will be smoother and move ahead more swiftly when we solve the issue of the rational distribution of the workforce, training and performance of the newly recruited. Because this is a process that must take place on specific terms and conditions. We cannot exceed the rules, but I believe that this is the future. Where well, lies the perspective of EAV? A quick uh, intervention by you, Mr. Avatsa, so as to close. Well, I believe that the minister has covered most of the subjects. We have always been believing in the Greek defense industry. There are also new companies in the private sector. There is a technological level which is upgraded. The Greek workforce in our country is indeed high caliber, very productive, and we also have our armed forces, which give us the possibility to learn from them, learn from their demands, and try to satisfy those demands by uh, offering, making our contribution in the defense sector. Let me mention something. Indeed, the R&D have been very important for the companies of the Greek defense industry. We have uh, attained a very high percentage in the European Union. We are rank four or five behind the big countries that were allocated such programs, but also the Ministry of Defense must offer more money in R&D because there lies the future for the Greek defense industries as well. So with what currently happens in Europe, we must also be boosted by the Ministry of Defense. They must have their own program, that is, in order to offer this boost to the Greek Hellenic defense industry. 30 seconds, because when you hear discussion, the ideas appear. Perhaps on your initiative, we might try to have a convergence of the two ministries of development and defense on a seclusive subject of R&D, the framework of defense industry. 
It could be via the supervising service that deals with this subject. Mr. Alexopoulos is very uh, an expert on the subject and bring those two ministries together. The Ministry of Development has all the funds. We tried to claim for our ministry and intermediate agencies has to have access to the funds of the European uh, Defense uh, Fund. And I would have no objection for this to happen jointly with the Ministry of Development. But these two agencies the managing service there and the respective agency for the Ministry of Development can cooperate. This is an idea to be processed. Of course, we'll have the time for that because the challenge lies ahead and it is a constant and continuous challenge. There is no, the horizon is not a mere one governmental mandate, it's an ongoing effort. And the effort for better and fighting armed forces and the support of the defense industry, it's an effort which is standing effort. And the conjuncture imposed more than ever to have this intensified. Thank you, Mr. Minister, Mr. Papanza, I warmly thank you. This has been a most interesting discussion. Thank you.